Hey y'all, Melissa here with you today, and today I'm answering one of your sewing questions. We're going to be talking about how to use a walking foot. A walking foot is a special kind of foot for your sewing machine that helps feed fabric from the presser foot side as well as from the feed dogs. So to understand a little more about what I'm talking about here, let's take a look at the feed dogs on the machine. So if I lift the presser foot and take off my regular presser foot, these little ridged things here are the feed dogs, those as well. And their job is to grip the fabric and pull it through as you stitch. So you're not supposed to have to pull your fabric through with your hand. For the most part, if you have your settings correct, the machine should feed the fabric itself generally, and then you just use your hands to guide it to keep it feeding straight. And let's take a look at how that is accomplished with the feed dogs. So if I take a stitch here, do you see how they go down? And then they move forward, and then they move towards the back of the machine. And that is how that repeated motion is how the fabric gets pulled towards the back of the machine. So if you take a look at the walking foot that I have here, this is the one that came with my machine, you can't see it very easily, but these edges here are ridged just like the feed dogs on my machine. So we'll take a close look at what happens while this is in motion, but basically those get pressed down through these holes on my presser foot and they help pull the fabric from the top instead of just the bottom. The general process of fabric feeding is they get pull, it gets pulled by the feed dogs on the bottom and it just slides across the presser foot from the top. With this process, it's getting pulled from the top and the bottom so it can feed more evenly. Let's take a look at how to put this on the machine. So I've already removed my snap-on foot here, but this is machine specific how you put them on. On my particular machine, I'm going to have to remove the whole shank. So I'm going to need to unscrew this here. And these are handy little screwdrivers for working around your machine because they're so little. And I will link this below. So I'm loosening up that screw so that I can take off the quick snap shank as well as the presser foot. And now I'm going to put my walking foot back on. So this is where it's going to go on the shank and then this little lobster claw, this is going to go over the needle holder. Now one of the pitfalls I've noticed with my machine is that the needle can come out when I'm using the walking foot because of this claw riding on the holder there. So I make sure to really tighten the foot onto the shank and then after I'm done with that, I also want to tighten the needle. So let's take a look at what this does if I'm trying to make a stitch. So when I put the presser foot down, you can see that these are not quite touching right yet. But as the needle goes down, they've come up and then they move forward and they're mirroring what the feed dogs below are doing. And then as the needle comes up and the fabric is going to feed back, they pull back with the presser or with the feed dogs. So both the presser foot and the feed dogs are pulling back. Let's see what that looks like with fabric going through. One way that a walking foot can be useful is for sewing stretch fabrics because sometimes the bottom will get stretched by the feed dogs and then the top won't and you end up with unevenness by the end of a seam. So I'm just gonna put this in there, put my presser foot down. I'm gonna to switch to a longer stitch so you can see this more clearly. And then I'm going to stitch really slowly here. And you can see the presser foot walking that through. Let's take a view from another angle. Here's a side view of the same process. So 
So another time that a walking foot might be helpful is when you're using really thick fabric or when you're sewing through multiple layers of different types of materials like you would be doing if you were quilting. So when you're quilting, you generally have your fabric backing and then you have your batting and then there's fabric over the top. So I'm making a little sandwich here and we can kind of see the three layers that would be present on a quilt. If I'm putting this in my machine, it's so, it's thick, my machine can handle this thickness, but it's very easy for those feed dogs to have contact with the bottom layer and not the top. A walking foot is going to take this through the machine more evenly. And you can see here that that fed really evenly and I got very nice stitches on both the front and the back of the piece that I was quilting. So that is how you use a walking foot. Those are two instances you might want to use one if you're having trouble with knits that are stretching as you're sewing, or if you are quilting, it can give you a more even feed through the feed dogs and help make your stitches nicer. If you have a sewing question that you'd like to see possibly answered on a future segment, I've got that linked in the post below. And I also have this playlist that is full of all the sewing questions that I've answered before. So you might wanna check that out to see if your question has already been answered.